So you've made an assignment before, but this video will show you how to dive deeper into the best practices of using the assignment tool in Canvas. Our biggest area of improvement really focuses on text, images, and the videos we embed within the rich content editor. Let's all be honest, sometimes we've given minimal details within the description box of an assignment as we've delivered those details in person. But ideally, students who miss class or are engaged in virtual learning can now read the details and be able to complete the assignment without having to ask us questions. These assignment descriptions provide family members with additional information if they are helping their students learn or troubleshoot an assignment. The assignment should be clearly outlining the learning target, what students need to do in the assignment, and how they are supposed to complete the task. Let's look at how we can do that better. So best practice says that when you're creating an assignment in Canvas, that you give a clear title, you would include a learning target for the task at hand. In this one, we just said that I can respond to a writing prompt using textual evidence. Uh, again, we really highlighted the idea of good graphics. So if I'm going to import an image, maybe I have this all set up here. Uh, I'm going to include this as this is just an example of what we are doing here. And then we have a writing prompt that students will answer. What textual evidence in To Kill a Mockingbird proves that Boo is the metaphorical mockingbird? Let's say I wanted to add some additional directions that break down what they should be doing in this assignment. So I wanted to leave them a video so they make sure they really understand how to answer this prompt. What I can do is when I'm on my screen, I can click on this media recording area right here and click record media. This will allow me to create a video directly in Canvas and place it right into my assignment area. So you're going to see me come on the camera in just a second. Here I am with To Kill a Mockingbird in my hands. What I'm going to do then as I am the teacher, I'm going to hit the start recording button. It gives me a countdown. And then I can explain what I want them to do specifically um, with me explaining it instead of me writing a ton of text. And so I can explain that we are doing this on certain chapters. We can look at certain pages. And when I'm saying text evidence, this is what I'm looking for. When I explain all of that in the video to describe the assignment, I can hit finish. This is what it looks like. It gives kind of an untitled area right here. If I wanted to, I could name it. Otherwise, I'm just going to hit save. What that's going to do is it's then going to drop this description about what they're supposed to be doing into my assignment post. Once you see that in there with that lovely picture, students can then easily push play and hear the directions with me explaining it instead of the text. Let's be honest, we know that a lot of learners would prefer to watch the video to understand how to do it than read a paragraph of text as we describe how to do it hopefully well with our text. So this might be a really great option to explain an assignment and what you'd like them to do without writing significant amount of time. Once I've added that in there, let's say I wanted to kind of reorganize my directions. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm already in here editing, so I'm going to move the directions around to be right after that. I can add the watch this video to understand how to respond to the prompt. And then I also have below directions about how to actually submit this. So click on the submit button and then a text entry will appear at the bottom for you to type your response. Now, just so you know, at the end of this whole course, we will have a resource for you for common directions so that you can simply copy and paste both the text and the pictures right into your assignment so you're not recreating the wheel. As we scroll down, we can then give this points depending on what your setting is. If you're in a traditional format or are giving a formative in a standards-based course, you can give this whatever amount of points that you would like. If you are a standards-based course and this is a summative assessment, you will then have to attach the amount of points based on how many standards you're assessing. So one standard, four points, two standards, eight points. You're going to put this here and make sure you pick the correct assignment group of where this is going. If it's a formative task, you put it there. Or if you have different assignment categories or groups that this needs to go into, we need to make sure that that matches what's going to be happening in Infinite Campus. This just says how we are going to display our grade. So if we are looking at this, percentage is not used frequently. Complete or incomplete means that if an assignment is completed, it'll get the full points. In this case, it's four. If it's incomplete, it would get zero. 
If we're displaying it as points, it would use a score of 0 through 4. If it's a letter grade, it will be based on the grading scheme that you are using. So if they had a 3 out of 4 and it's a traditional scale, we know that's a 75% and that would then correlate to a C. If it's a standards-based course, it would then correlate with a mastery or proficiency level. The most famous of the three would be letter grade, points, or complete or incomplete. Again, this is just how the grade is displayed in the grade book. As you go on down the submission types, um, online, you would want to do if students are handing something in digitally, um, if you're doing like we did in this, I would just put text entry here. Uh, if you're having them hand in a Google document, you would want to do a file upload. Uh, you could keep this and they could paste that into the text box as well. Otherwise, I would turn that off if they're just trying to upload a Google Doc and that's how you would like that to happen. Uh, below you have the allowed attempts, which is newer. Um, if you wanted unlimited attempts or limited, you just want them to hand it in once. Uh, some advanced tools here if you want to make this a group assignment we can talk about more with your tech coaches but peer review is another cool way for students to have to review other students work and give feedback to them for the middle school and high school levels you want to make sure that this is going to sync to infinite campus and you have that checked additionally you want to make sure that this is assigned to everyone and then then you are going to add a due date otherwise it will not sync to infinite campus unless there's a circumstance later on where you want to edit your assignment and let's say my student paula uh, was gone for either medical reasons or other instances i can add this to a sign i can pick a specific student here and i can give paula in this instance a different due date Okay, this can be done after you've already assigned it to everyone, which did include Paula, but now I can assign it and Paula really has until the 6th of November to complete this when everybody else has until October 15th. So you can do this as a way to differentiate some of the due dates so it wouldn't mark it late for some students. You would then hit save and publish, and then we are off to the races. Now there are a variety of ways where you can dive even deeper into Canvas assignments. And I just wanna draw your attention to some of the things on the challenge page that you're about to go to. Now, first of all, if you look at the bottom of this page, you'll see that how you can create a Google Docs cloud assignment is another cool tool that you can use within assignments and also using other external tools like Pear Deck or Edpuzzle within Canvas. These are links to learn more about this and your tech coach is more than willing to help you with these tools as well. And with that, we hope that you've dove deeper as you looked at assignments and this gave you some really great new tips that you can implement in your classroom this year.